it's Nadia from Leodia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we are creating really cute, um, as you saw in the time lapse, we're creating really cute little flower coasters and check out that holographic effect. Oh my god, it's so pretty. So that was made from this mold, as you can see here, I think. This is a molds and shapes mold and the holographic pattern is right within the mold. I've shown you a larger version. This is the coaster version of this magical mold. So they do have the holographic version and they do have a non-holographic version. So I wanted to do a few things in this video. I wanted to show the holographic mold uh, and how it looks on coasters. I also wanted to do these this new flower technique that seems to be making the rounds on social media. Um, if you follow me, if you've been following me for a while, you know, I used to do flower coasters years ago <laughs> when I first started doing resin. And I've done a number of techniques on some different flower, um, just techniques either I've created or things I've seen online. Um, generally, I don't, um, I don't look at anybody else's, like I don't look at anyone else's tutorials and you know, basically copy them. What I try to do is if I see something online, I might just be like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. And I kind of try to figure it out for myself. So that's what I've done here is I've seen people using what looks like to be alcohol inks in these, uh, these pieces here. And it gives a really neat effect. So I wanted to test that out. And I also tested something, and I don't know if you would have saw it in the time lapse, but I wanted to test the difference between using the alcohol ink white, the in this case it's pinata, or the regular pigment paste, which is what I normally use for flowers. So I wanted to also test that as well to see if there, or how much of a difference. Obviously there's going to be a difference, but how much of a difference there was going to be. So, so we did that and that's what you saw in the time lapse. So as, as you know, or as many as you, you might know, I generally stay away from alcohol inks and that's because they have a, rep a reputation of fading uh, pretty quickly sometimes within months. So the color might go from vibrant blues, purples, whatever, and it might just almost fade away to nothing. So I try to stay away from it from that reason. I've stayed away from alcohol inks pretty much my entire resin, you know, career, I guess, for the last three years. Um, but I've, I did a bit of research and I do, I did have the Jacquard Pinata alcohol inks and they do say that these ones last longer than most. So hopefully, I mean, according to their web, according to their representatives, um, their alcohol inks should last years and years. So, and as you know, I, when I try to create pieces, I want them to have longevity. I'm not trying to create disposable pieces. I'm trying to create something that people will hold on to for a while. Anyway, so as you saw in the time lapse really quick, um, what we did is we poured our um, one to one resin and I use countercultures one to one. It's their artist thin. So it has a working time of about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, I stand in front of my heater when I'm stirring. So it does shorten the time a bit. So it's about 20 minutes. I pour it in. I um, use the heat gun to get all the bubbles out. I add little stones in the center and then um, I put drops of the alcohol ink, the colors that I wanted kind of around. You don't need a lot. You can you just put a little bit or you can put a lot depending on how much saturation you want with your um, alcohol ink. Now, don't overdo it because um, it could cause problems. So just be careful with that. So once you've done that, I waited probably only about two to three minutes uh, once I mixed up my pastes and my, um, in this case, I was testing the pinata uh, white pigment. And then I went ahead and started just basically putting in little petals and just to see how that all worked out. Now, I did notice that um, when you're using the pigment paste, um, you definitely want to make it on the lighter side, like a little bit transparent, but like not too much. Like it's white, but it's not super thick because when it's the, th the thicker it is, the heavier or the more pigment paste you add, the heavier it makes the resin and then it's going to drop more. So you want to make it a little bit on the lighter side. Anyway, um, so based on all that, <laughs> um, these are the results that we got. So this was one. And again, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And so this was the pigment paste. So that's the Lores here. So that is the pigment paste. Just look at it. It is gorgeous. 
I'm it's such a neat look like I've never <laughs> I've never achieved anything like this I've had some really beautiful flowers before but I normally use pigment paste for all the colors so this was just such an interesting look that we got with that so we had that and then this one was one of the two so actually there's both of these these are the two that I use the um the alcohol ink for so okay but not obviously not as much white kind of coming through it did here this one looks a little bit nicer where you can see a little bit of the white kind of a feathery look I think this one also I put the the purple more towards the center and I think that just kind of darkened the center a bit too much with the stone so the uh, one thing I want to recommend too is you're going to put anything in the middle of your flower put it before you put your alcohol ink because that was the mistake I made is I put the alcohol ink first everything moved to the center and then I tried to put the stones and that's what happened so you see what happened there with um, some other ones I'm going to show you in a bit I put the stones in first and it turned out a lot better so anyway so I would definitely say for me personally uh, and this is the other one from the ones of the first four that I made I definitely would say that this one I think I put too much of like I was dropping too much of the white pigment paste in at one time so you kind of want to be a little bit careful with how much in terms of big dollops or drops you're putting in but this one I did a better job <laughs> so and I made these ones into little bowls I think they're super cute so there we go so I do think that worked out really well uh, I got excited <laughs> after making those and I um, went ahead and I made a few more now again I made uh, some with this mold here with a holographic and I made a couple without so let's show you the ones without and again I use the same colors so the purple and the pink but this does not have the holographic um, imprint on it so I do have another mold of this that doesn't have that pattern inside the holographic pattern so you can see so beautiful and these are the ones I put in the stones first before I put in the alcohol ink so you can see how much nicer those look and I added glitter <laughs> on the edges of these so there we go so beautiful I still think they're beautiful either way let's put you guys here and I also made a couple with blue and purple so here we go and these ones I did use the holographic mold so just look at how cool these ones are not quite fully hardened yet I got to go put them back in the bowl because they're kind of losing their shape a little bit here like you can see they're still a bit they're hard they're like hardens but they're still a little bit flexible but you can see these like look how cool these look and with that little bit of holographic shine in there it's just oh, <laughs> it's just so cool anyway so there we go I just wanted again to show you really quickly on um, this new technique and like I said you just want to go in and you put in your resin uh, now if you do have resin that takes longer than so my resin the one-to-one -one that I use it takes about um, eight to ten hours to cure so that means that halfway through is about four hours and that's when I came or three three and a half hours to four yeah three and a half hours or so is when I came down to shape these into bowls I could take them out I can hold them they're not sticky that they, they don't leave fingerprints I could pick them up and put them in the bowl and that's when I want to put those in to shape them um, and then like I said completely ready to demold them hardened within about eight to ten hours if you have a resin that takes longer than that you'll want to test that a little bit differently um, you'll want to probably it's almost like halfway point um, in terms of shaping the bowls now in terms of actually putting in the alcohol ink and the um, the uh, the pigment paste and things like that I do have another tutorial that I'll link here that actually has it's a resin test basically so for timing purposes where I actually show how you can test your resin for timing so if you find that you attempt something like this and all you're getting is big blobs then um, you can just use that tutorial to kind of show you know help you walk you through what you need to do for um for testing and kind of figuring out the timing so anyways guys oh one more thing before i go because i am going to wrap this one up it's going to be a super fast one today is um i've decided because i enjoy these and I normally flowers are not my thing i mean in terms of this type of technique you know pouring flowers i love painting flowers but um pouring flowers is not usually 
you know, my thing, but, uh, and plus there's so many other people doing it, but I decided that I like the process of this so much. I will be selling them on my website, but they will be part of likely the, my new mystery boxes. If you're not familiar on my website, I do have mystery boxes. The first three sets are almost sold out. There was like a Lotus candle holder set, a shell, a crystal candle holder set, and excuse me, and some little shell jewelry trays. Um, they are almost all sold out. <laughs> so there's a couple left on there if you want to go check them out. I am going to create some new ones. Um, so you would get like one or two, depending if it's like a bowl, you'd probably get a bowl. Plus you'd probably get some other item, maybe a candle holder and all a bunch of little trinkety things that I have that, uh, you know, are usually you made out of the leftover resin that I make. So they're really neat. A lot of people bought them as gifts for, for other people just to kind of, it allows you to get a whole bunch of stuff that I make for a really low price compared to what I normally sell my items for. So if you want to check that out, keep an eye out for it. You can sign up from on my mailing list, which is um, everything's going to be in the beacons link below this video. So you can go check that out. Sign up for my mailing list. I have discounts every so often. And you also get a notice of when I upload new products to my website. So you can be the first to know. So if you want to be involved with that, I'm going to be doing some other little Christmassy type things before the holidays come around. So sign up if you're interested. And uh, yeah, so I'm out of breath. <laughs> I'm talking way too fast. Sorry, guys. I'm under a time crunch, so I got to go. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments what you think of this technique. And if you've tried anything like this, let me know if you have any tips or if, you know, just in terms of what happened, how successful was it for you, um, anything that you've learned along the way, or, you know, if you just want to comment on how these turned out, whatever you'd like to do. So, um, uh, and uh, yeah, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really does help. And sh please share the video. It really does help. I'm not really sure what's going on with um, YouTube lately. It seems like um, engagement's a little bit down. So if you have seen this and you like this and you like my videos, you like my tutorials, or you just like watching me create things, uh, feel free to subscribe and like and share and leave a comment. <laughs> All those things are free and you can definitely help me out a lot if you do that. Um, for those of you who do want to um, go ahead and send in donations, uh, feel free to do that. There's again, in the there's a buy me a coffee in the link below in the description. And um, I am going to be, I think, I haven't made 100% of the decision yet. I think I'm going to be starting up my Patreon again. So if you are interested in anything like that, let me know if you'd be interested in um, doing the Patreon thing. And if there's any type of perks you'd like to see from my Patreon for memberships, feel free to let me know that as well. I have some ideas, but love to hear what you guys think as well. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here and watching to the end of the video. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.